Well, good morning. Uh, it's lovely to be here. Uh, I know it's a bit early, but uh, but uh, thank you very much for the uh, EIF for uh, organising this. It's always a uh, always a pleasure to speak about internet uh, internet matters, and I think this is a uh, this is a crucial time, as uh, Sabina said. I'll uh, I'll try and be relatively brief, and you might say, well, I've heard that before, uh, but. Uh, because I think uh, this morning in particular uh, we ought to uh, debate some of the issues that uh, uh, some of the issues concerning internet governance and especially as we look forward uh, to the uh, to the following year uh, and well the European Commission so it's good to be able to speak for the European Commission as well uh, so I welcome their new communication uh, and uh, it's a shame they're not here to uh, to present on it because uh, clearly it is a an important uh, it is an important mu- it is an important step in this whole debate as we'll come to later but first of all I just wanted to uh, address two things first of all to look back to an extent at the IGF and how that has has shaped uh, developments, but also then to look forward uh, to the next year in light of the developments uh, from from Bali. But first of all, then the IGF, and why is the Internet Governance Forum important? Well, I think for many of us, it's important simply because it is the only real global opportunity. It is the only real global dialogue on internet governance matters that that takes place. The Internet Governance Forum was established through the World Summit on the Information Society in 2005, and some of us were debating that. I was in the UK government at uh, that time, and that was a, a very important step because the setting up of the Internet Governance Forum in itself institutionalised the concept of the multi-stakeholder approach. And I think some of those that go to the IGF, we're there, we take part, and we must congratulate the European Parliament as being some of the eminent parliamentarians at the uh, at the IGF and it it is so important that parliamentarians governments business civil society users take part in this debate at the internet governance forum and it's a debate that's important because people there are if you like in, uh, institutionalizing and recognizing the benefits of the multi stakeholder approach this IGF was very interesting because it was in Bali, and to an extent in the run-up to <laughs> that in itself, and in the run-up to the Internet Governance Forum, there was a lot of problems actually in the run-up to the Internet Governance Forum in terms of holding it uh, in Bali in terms of the organisation, but we no- needn't go into that. But for some, the very notion of holding a, a serious discussion in, in, in Bali was, a, was a, a sort of a conceptual nightmare. But as it turned out, it probably was the most serious Internet Governance Forum they'd been. And I think for many people coming away from Bali, they said the Internet Governance Forum has now matured. Now, uh, you know, maturity is one of those things. Is it better to be immature or mature? But I think what happened at Bali is we had the serious backdrop of the Internet Governance debate ahead, and people really did concentrate on what the future might bring. So I think personally it was a very interesting discussion, it was a very important discussion and no no doubt Michael will have some other takeaways from it. In addition to discussing internet governance in detail, Bali also touched on a number of other important issues, particularly internet freedoms, uh, human rights and the whole uh, debate about privacy, which no doubt we'll come to. So, looking forward... And this particular year is is very important for a number of reasons. And it would have been very important anyway, because if we'd have met in Bali in November without the Snowden affair, without surveillance, without those revelations that happened over the summer, we would have still been discussing the importance of this year ahead, because this year ahead is a turning point 
in the debate on internet governance. Much as the, the WISIS process in 2003 and 2005 was, if you like, a test on whether inter, in, the governance of the internet should be a multilateral affair or should be a multi-stakeholder affair, so 2014-2015 is as well. But the Snowden revelations have completely changed the dynamic of the debate, as we'll come to later. So the year ahead was, is, is going to be very important indeed. And it's going to be important, I think, for t three main reasons. First of all, it's going to debate whether the internet, whether internet governance should continue in its present form, which, as Sabine said, is largely a bottom-up approach with many different actors. It's going to determine the role of ICANN and other players in the domain name system. And it's also going to show the role of Europe in, in the whole debate. And I say that for a number of reasons. First of all, the debate post-Snowden is sharper because of the fact that the US government now is, has not got the leading role that it's played before. Up to, up to last summer or, or whatever, many of us, even at the Wicket discussions last December when the ITU held the discussions in, uh, in, in Dubai on the internet telecommunication regulation, many of us were, if you like, with the US in terms of their efforts, in terms of their initiatives for internet freedom, for, inter for the openness of the internet, and for the single internet. The US traditionally have taken a lead in that. I'm not saying Europe hasn't taken a lead as well, but the US has certainly taken a dominant role. But post-Snowden, the dynamic has changed, and the US cannot play the same role. So Europe very much has to step up to the plate. Europe can show through its sophistication, through its uh, diversity, that it can play this role. And hence the importance of what the European Commission can bring forward in terms of the communication that's, that's due on internet governance. Because this, the communication coming out before the Brazil conference, will be important, and it will certainly show the way that Europe is, is looking. So, in terms of the importance of the debate, and I'll come to Brazil in a minute, but I want to just frame what could happen, what scenarios there might be in this future year. And I think the main, the main scenario is whether we get to Busan, where the ITU will hold the plenipotentiary conference in Busan in South Korea in, uh, in November this year, whether we get to that particular conference with a recognition that the multi-stakeholder approach, that the, the approach of all users in debating internet governance is still alive and still recognised as the best way forward, or whether we get to that conference with many governments saying, well, you know, the different actors have had their chance since 2003, 2005. It is now for the governments to take over. Now, you know, one doesn't want to be too dramatic about this. When that ITU plenipotentiary conference ends in uh, the middle of November this year, the internet is not going to suddenly switch off. No one is going to, uh, you know, no one is going to notice a great difference all at once. But if there is a call for governments, or if there's a call for the ITU or for a, another institution to effectively take control of the domain name system away from ICANN and the other regional internet registries for, for there to be a multilateral approach for the governance of the internet, then what we are going to see in the next few years is this sort of fragmentation of the open internet as we know it, because Europe and the US would certainly be unlikely to want uh, to enter into a governance arrangements that were purely top-down from the ITU or the UN. And this, as Sabine has also said, is, is the great opportunity and, and the great threat, because the, the internet 
as we know from the work that the European Union, the EIF and so many other people have done, the internet is only strong and is only economically resilient and economically beneficial because it is a single open internet. Without that essence of the single internet, then we lose some of the real advantages that we have. And I can, as just a, a minor contributor, contribution, if you like, to that debate, released a report with the Boston Consulting Group this week that looked at the whole issue of e-friction and how open internet and how closed internet affects economic growth and GDP. So that is the challenge we have. So to finish with Brazil and why that's important in this context, it's important because we are entering this debate at the moment with the multi-stakeholder approach, as I said, as being at the forefront of the agenda. The Brazil conference is an opportunity to demonstrate that all stakeholders, governments, businesses, civil societies, users, etc. want to be able to approach the future of internet governance in a holistic way all together rather than just being dominated by one particular faction. Brazil is a bellwether country as we've discussed before in, in this forum. Brazil has taken the mantle President Rousseff at the UN declaring, when she talked about surveillance, declaring that the future of the governance of the internet had to be on the table. Well, Brazil are holding this conference in, in April in Sao Paulo, and it has two, two dominant themes. The first theme is to agree internet governance principles, and those principles will of course touch on the whole issue of the multi-stakeholder approach, and secondly to spell out a roadmap, a roadmap for the future of internet governance, the internet governance ecosystem. And it's that roadmap that will largely determine whether we go down a road of multilateralism in the future, or whether we retain this bottom-up multi-stakeholder approach. I'll finish there, but of course willing to uh, discuss later on. Thank you.